Welcome to this week's OK at Work with myself, Sarah Sawyer, and my colleague, Russell Berger, from the Offit Kerman Labor and Employment Group. And so this week, what else are we talking about but COVID? Lots, lots of COVID changes going on. Um, you know, we've had a couple episodes around masks, which we're still kind of figuring out um, as local governments and state governments and the federal government are adjusting guidance and laws and things like that. So um, I know I've been spending a lot of time with my clients working through what needs to stay in place, uh, what what can what can go by the wayside and kind of working through this COVID reset transition period. Um, what are some of the things that you've been dealing with, Russell? Yeah, so one of the things, and I don't think we mentioned it when we spoke about this last week, is we talked about, you know, state mandates for masks being kind of the first level of the decision. And we acknowledge that there are local requirements in certain jurisdictions may or may not have the same role as your state. And so you got to pay attention to those as well. Um, what I've also seen the last week is landlord property management company requirements as well. So, you know, what I've seen is a couple different landlords say, tenants, we know this is now the mandate or there is no mandate in our jurisdiction. But, you know, we're still going to require masks in our common areas and on the elevators and other places, maybe even throughout the entire building. Um, so just as as you go through your mask decision making, state mandates, local mandates, landlord requirements, and then you can get to the, you know, well, I can make my own decision, which, as we've said previously, you know, we think really should be guided by the CDC guidance and uh and I guess some some news in the last week is that OSHA is going to, going to come out as confirmed. They're going to come out with some guidance, um, you know, to to really fully flush this out more for employers. So you know, we'll probably be talking about that in another couple of weeks here. Yeah, and I know a lot of businesses are really looking for that guidance because in in a situation where let's say you're in a local jurisdiction where there's no local mandates and you're just going by the state rules, which at this point the state rules are you know, non-vaccinated people or vaccinated people don't have to wear a mask, but the CDC guidance is non-vaccinated, wear a mask, vaccinated, wear a mask. Well, so now business owners are having to figure out, well, what do we do? What makes sense for our workforce? How do I need to, you know, make sure that I provide a safe workplace under this new guidance? Is it okay for me to say, all right, employees if you're vaccinated you don't need to wear a mask if you're unvaccinated you need to wear a mask but we're not going to police it because we don't want to be in the business of figuring out who's vaccinated who's not and then policing that well is that okay and is that is that a safe enough option um you know and so that's i think the the osha guidance is going to be really welcome um by a lot of businesses to kind of close hopefully um, you know, we obviously haven't seen it yet so uh, but hopefully close some of those gaps and give some guidance to businesses as they're moving forward and transitioning here um and also you know I, I know as i've worked through this with some clients and they've had to really take a practical approach of what makes the most sense for their workforce we're also looking at well what outside of masks what else needs to stay in place to keep your workforce safe and to comply with, you know, OSHA regulations, certain things with reporting and things like that. I mean, what are some of the things you think should stay in place, Russell? Yeah. So, you know, one thing that definitely should stay in place is the keeping people out of the office when they have a close contact. Um, a huge caveat on that compared to where we were a few months ago is fully vaccinated people that have a close contact with someone positive don't need to quarantine, nor do people that have had COVID in the last 90 days. Uh, and, and caveat to that, unless they have symptoms. Um, but generally speaking, you know, you don't have to worry about your fully vaccinated people uh, having close contacts because they're vaccinated. And, you know, that's, that's what the guidance now s suggests. But for people that are not fully vaccinated, if they have a close contact, those rules still apply uh, regarding quarantining in isolation. So that so that's one of the, the big practical ones that employers should still uh you know, still have a process for identifying and enforcing. Yeah, and the symptoms is a, is a good good point as well. I mean, if, if an employee has a fever or any of these, you know, has a loss of taste and smell, vaccinated or unvaccinated at this point, um, but especially unvaccinated, that they still need to be advised to stay out of the office. Um, so a lot of those those protocols still need to be in place around reporting and um, and also just encouraging your employees to continue the safe habits that we've been putting in place over the last year, which are good for COVID prevention, but also just the overall health of your workforce, obviously, which is, you know, frequent wash 
hand washing, um, no more communal pretzel jar. I think <laughs> always a good uh, a good option here. Um, but you know, so keeping encouraging employees. So you know, I would just recommend you know generally the we we say this a lot like about just the communication piece, right? So instead of just saying like, all right, everyone, we're <laughs> we're all good. Like we're back to normal. I mean, I just don't think that's ever going to be um, an option. You want to continue to encourage your employees to to have these safe practices in, in place. It's going to help you overall. Yeah. And same, by the same token, you know, I, I'm still uh, advising that you should maintain social distancing in the office. And I understand the guidance says fully vaccinated people don't need to worry about uh, social distancing. But, you know, in terms of the number of chairs in the conference room or in the break room, uh, you know, those are still things that I would recommend spacing them out and not having people sitting directly across the table from each other. Because, you know, even if you have 100 people, 100 employees, if you have three that are unvaccinated, uh, you know, you can still have an issue. So, um, you know, e even if you have a highly vaccinated workforce, it doesn't mean it's a totally vaccinated workforce. And unless you know you have a totally vaccinated workforce, um, you know, I think it's just best practice to keep those in place as well. Yeah, I think it makes sense. A lot of businesses have restructured. Um, and, and so it, it's and it might even be more efficient long term, some of the spacing and the different ways that you've redesigned your office. So I think it'll be interesting moving forward to see how um, how businesses evaluate that, um, you know, and and how they move forward as as things open up. So. Yeah, don't don't take the plexiglass down yet. <laughs> yes, even though we all want to a little bit, right? Uh, maybe some people don't want to. Maybe people, some people want plexiglass the entire time. But <laughs> we'll have a super super healthy workforce forever if we uh, are always all behind <laughs> plexiglass. Yeah, yeah. We'll wait wait till the CDC and OSHA tell us that's okay. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, well, that's a little weird and a little uncomfortable, but for right now, you know, hang in there with it. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with that. Well, until next time, and uh, we'll probably be talking about OSHA then, but we'll see. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah.